gentlemen uh, welcome to the wayne dupree show let me get centered here uh anxiously awaiting uh the wayne dupree icon to uh, step into the studio my name is hutch bailey jr you're watching the wayne dupree podcast let me go over that away and welcome jason to the program hey, hey, hey. happy uh, happy new year everybody last show of 2023 we're ready to kiss this here goodbye hutch yeah it's, it can't come quick enough but i have a feeling that next year is going to be worse than this year. So, I mean, everybody's, I think pretty much uh, people that are paying attention are aware of that. Uh, looking forward to it in a way, but a little, uh, a little sketchy in a way too, Jay. Yeah. What, what, what do you think is going to be the first big bomb to drop? I mean, we got the Epstein stuff that's supposed to come out right away, but I mean, the media will just probably hide that or say, Oh, that doesn't really mean anything or whatnot. I think, unfortunately, what you're going to see is uh, something that we haven't seen in a very long time, and that's a sinking of a Navy vessel. Really? Uh, I mean, I, I, the Red Sea is no joke, man. I mean, it, it's something that's historically dangerous, and um, the technology today puts a, a naval vessel at, at pretty high risk. Uh, you know, it, it's something that nobody ever talks about, but, you know, it, it makes me a little nervous sometimes when that happens but you know there's also some good things on the horizon there's a lot of uh a lot of truth being revealed about different things uh, but ladies and gentlemen let me turn it over to wayne dupree hello sir my man um i i think my clock is wrong <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and and guess what i didn't oversleep or anything i just thought i had a little bit more time i, I look i'm up there uh, fixing up the coffee and everything, <laughs> whistling and everything, and all you know, and all of a sudden I was like, trouble one. <laughs> <laughs> you remember you, you remember back in the day when we were first starting out, it didn't matter what time it was, man. We start seven minutes late, yeah, 12 yeah. minutes late. It was like people didn't know when to when to tune in. Right. No, they were like, like they were like. Oh, they banned y'all. No, we just haven't started yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is our last show of the year, y'all. Um we were just talking about that about 2023 yeah. and 2024 and what to expect. Yeah, I, I, I thought look, I thought it was gray hair. I was like, whoa. Hanging down like super ants here. Um yeah, man. We um Wow. Getting ready to go into another election year, 2024. Uh, if there's an election. <laughs> yeah, I think look, a lot of people are on the edge of their seats right now in this country, probably in the world. Yeah. I mean. The things these I, Democrats are doing and the I, things the Republicans what? are letting them do. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's that's the narrative that is out there and there can't be any more true narrative. The Democrats are getting away with it, and the Republicans are letting them. I mean, to put, I mean, pushback. There is no pushback. There is no halt. There is no fight. There, I mean, um, I was watching, I was reading somebody's timeline last night, and they were talking about the culture, and they were slamming um, Democrat culture again. I was like, okay, well, what's your alternative? What do you want to do? I mean, you make fun of them. You make memes. You make videos. You know, you uh, you want them canceled, even though you say you're against cancel country. You want them canceled on, uh, and you post it on social media. What's your alternative? You aren't you aren't giving people an alternative. You know, I mean, it look, you know, look, culture culture is easy, especially especially for us. Look, 
we have fun on our side. We do. We, I mean, and even if we don't have fun on our side, we have fun with our liberal friends. Yes, yes, yeah, we do have liberal friends. We do. I mean, the only issue is we just don't talk politics with our liberal friends. We just talk regular stuff. I mean, we talk about life. We talk about how the bills. We talk about uh, uh, um, was it uh, the price of groceries going up, and we, while we're drinking beer and chugging one down, and we're eating hot dogs. And man, how did you do those ribs? You know, I mean, you know, it's it, it's it's so many other things out there. But I think I think I learned this. I knew it, but I think I learned it more this year than I have any other year. Thanksgiving and Christmas this year, I tried my damnedest not to do anything political on social media. Backed away from it, you know. And, you know, we took the last couple of weeks off in certain places. Don't y'all feel like rejuvenate? Well, not really rejuvenated, but clear on certain things when you're not being fed be angry uh be be uh be be crazy be be you know what you call it do you know you, you see things you uh you should you should see things a whole lot more clearly am i right am i wrong no that sounds good i mean that that break that we had was really nice it was uh therapeutic if you will yeah yeah, I was gonna say it was it was kind of fun because we get oh Wayne's making fun of me. He just of hat. Your hair. He has on his hat. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I went hat. Well, I, I I was running the leaf blower this morning and I had my winter hat on and I'm like, oh man, Wayne's gonna make so much fun of me. I'm going with the hat. Look, tell your wife. Tell your wife is all in is all in love. I. You know, <laughs> No, Jen's like, when are you getting a haircut? I'm like, did you listen to the show? She's like, I caught part of it. I'm like, did you catch the part about Wayne giving me grief about my haircut? <laughs> hey, but I, I brought proof. I had told you that as a child, I had an oh, afro. Man. Oh, my God. <laughs> you caught hell in school, didn't you? I know. <laughs> well, it was funny. We were poor, so my mom would give me haircuts, and it would turn out horribly. So I'm like, you ain't coming near me with them scissors. So then, so then my folks are like, are you sure about that? Oh, and oh, yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. I bet my afro is better than yours, Wayne. And that's from a white you boy, know what? man. You know what? My mom and my father would not let me grow an afro. My hair was always short. Really? Until well, until I tried to cut my own hair, and then she told the barber to cut it all off. <coughs> me. But my father wouldn't let her. I, but my father wouldn't let the barber do it. But that's because you grew up always, in the time. That's because you grew up in the time where combs were weapons. <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah, you can make a <laughs> shiv out of one if you needed to. Oh, I bet he had a gold plated rake. <laughs> oh yeah i'm envisioning one of those picks that was like stuck in the back of his hair you know talk about the ones with the handles the metal ones oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, well sit, actually sit right actually, next to the hot comb had wires though i yeah. mean it wasn't plastic it was right. wire man i know he picked that thing <laughs> but now um 2023 to many of us uh we Many of you have been awakened to many things that you have not been awakened to. And, and hopefully this program helped you get to that point. Um, we don't we don't hold no court. Now, look, first off, though, we do have people in Congress that we do like each. Each of us have different ones that we do like. OK. But I think even with that said. We still want Congress shut down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, because <clears throat> the way it is right now, from the way it, the the way it it has gotten, um, you know, they, they have shown us point blank we don't need Congress. Really, really, they can't do a budget. Everything they touch is turns to crap. Everything that I mean. They can't, they can't even agree on something for the American people. 
because their their interests are in the way. Okay, if they aren't getting something from it, or or what? Well, yeah, if they aren't getting something from it in their bank account or for their kids or whatnot, they ain't gonna vote for it. They're not. So they have shown us that we don't need them, basically. And you know, I, I mean, in sticking with the show and calling people out and calling people out on my side. I mean, I really don't want to do it. I'm, you know what? I'm not going to really get into it. Um, Lauren, uh, if that, I mean, look, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. You know, I mean, you, you, you're running from people that believed in you, in your district, you run into some, some other place. And somebody said MTG did the same thing. I don't know if she did the same thing. Uh, but <clears throat> look, if that's if that's where we are right now, that's where Congress is. That, I mean, Democrats have done it. Republicans are now saying, well, guess what? We're going to do it too. So um, uh, <laughs> that's how it is. But when I saw it, I was like, but God darn, I really thought that you were going to fight this boy. I really thought you were going to fight the Democrat, you know, that, because – your principles are better than his. Why run? Don't run. Beat him. Beat him. But it, you know, I ain't. I ain't well, it shows you that the most important thing to her is her job. Is her right. job. is that seat? Yeah. Is you know, seat? and I, I think one of the biggest things that's happened this year, and it's it's a culmination. It's not done yet, but it's it's reaching its climax, and that's the conservative Americans. I don't even like that term anymore. I don't either. I don't American either. patriots. Yeah. are looking yeah. at the Republican Party and going, this is done, man. And all you have to do is look at the amount of support that the uh, the elves have, the Keebler elves. Yeah, That's the Republican Party support. Man. That's all that's left. And if you look at the, the corruption in both parties, but especially in the Democrat Party, the Democrat Party, our history, there have been many, many new parties introduced. Yep. As one party gets corrupted, rotten from the top, it gets replaced by honest people who become corrupt pretty soon. Yeah. You know, but the Democrats have never been ousted. No, I've never. They've never. got institutional corruption there. Yeah. I mean, and that's something that I, I think that the biggest sun on our uh, our future is the destruction of the Republican Party. It needs to be replaced. And the whole thing needs to be replaced. We don't even have to call out names. We no, just no, need to get rid of it, man. It's got to be yeah. gone. It's worthless. Yeah, it's. A I was going to say, I, 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 we were talking about you know taking a little time off, and it was interesting to look back on the past year, and you know this time twelve months ago they were talking about who's going to be speaker, and there was all that drama, and and it really made me reflect. The Republican Party's dead. They're done. You know, it, and it, it's the the MAGA side of the wing which is your America first anti-war get, get money out of politics. That wing's taken over and there's such a large percentage of it that I think, I, I think without that, the Republican party's doomed. And honestly, there's a bunch of people on the left. I think that will be the hope for the country is that people on the left that say, Oh God, the Democrat party's just as corrupt you know, let's let's just want normal people and get back to arguing about silly things like like, you know, getting Tax the budget rates. done. And right. Yeah. yeah. Instead of all this, all these issues that we fight about, you know, from abortion to Social Security, like we, we need honest people that can actually like try to move the ball forward on the American people, not continue to ruin the country, because literally how many. We were counting, I was counting with the guys I work on the American Tribune with. There are five or ten existential threats that could bubble and pop this year. And everybody, you know, left likes to say climate change, but pick a financial sector. There's like eight of them that are teetering. Pick a war. We've got three or four bubbling. Take eight million immigrants that came in that weren't vetted. You know, the freaking Chinese spy balloon, that that story arc was never resolved. Uh, and any one of those things could fundamentally change the world. You know, back to the eight million. 
I, I started seeing some things and, you know, we talked about the military age males and the Chinese special forces coming in and uh, mm-hmm. jihadists coming in. If you notice all kinds of different countries are sending their military contingents here. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we get in a, and now you've got, you've got uh, the Pentagon starting mm-hmm. to reach out uh, to forward deploy against China. And when you, when you have that and you've already got, However many hundred thousand Chinese troops in this country, just think of a 9-11 every week. Right. You know, people don't realize the gravity of this thing. Right. And and our own people did it to us. Nobody cares, it doesn't seem like. Well, and we talked about it when the is when October 7th happened in Israel. That was a thousand people. And you're telling me that there aren't extremists that hate America where there's at least a thousand people that will be very well armed and trained. And I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if New Year's Eve or, you know, you see some, especially with all these pro Hamas protests and all the crazy stuff. And you know, I'll tell you what I just, what I was, I always get prepared about an hour before the show, just so I don't sound stupid. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I read this thing. These people think back to uh, miles Guo's nine twelve project when they said about using brown and and black people and yellow people to destroy white people so they could take this country over. These immigrants are being told to hate white people. Right. Mm -hmm. China's behind all this. The Chinese Communist Party. Let me get Mm -hmm. that right. Well, I I see stuff like that. I'm like, you look on television because television's a, a good barometer. You look at the advertising and it's like, they're not even the beautiful people anymore. These are ugly people on there. Yeah. You know, on commercials. It's like this is not a representative of this country. You know, I, I don't know. It's something that I don't think it's going to work. But the idea that they're trying it is telling. Because the people that are trying it are white people. Oh, I mean, I see it. I see it. Um, because with these people that are coming across, they're destroying the the urban communities. Yeah, they, you know, and what's I mean, what's the common I mean, denominator? I understand, I understand them- about the whites, but they are coming in and they are being put above the urban communities. I mean, like a stepping stone or that too, moving them right out of the way and bringing them up. And you know, I mean, look at what they're doing in New York. I mean, you well, know, we better they, join together then. Well. We better join together and fight a common enemy because that's what we've got. Yeah. They well, yeah, got right. dis- to displace you to have a displace the people in the inner city to have somewhere to live. Yeah. You guys are gone yep. that live there. Yep. Not you guys, people that live there. Right. Are, right. No, 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 you, no, 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 you need to stand up and look who's doing well, it to you. Where's the thing, too? Um, <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said this. People have checked out. And, 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 the only way that they're going to realize, I used to say this during speeches, um, when you come out of your house, you look to the look to the left in your neighborhood. Just look to the left. You remember how your neighborhood was when you first moved in there. Look to the left. And then look to the right. And then look in front. And you look at your neighborhood and you're like, when did my neighborhood get like this? You know? And, and then it's like, then it's time for you to go. Um, then it's time for you to start attending some of these community council meetings and go in there and start whipping some ass. I mean, go um, reach out to your friend. You don't have to go in there by yourself, y'all. Find some friends. Get some friends. Go go to these community council meetings and find out exactly what they're doing to your community, because that's where because that's basically where it starts. It starts in your community. Um, because the people in Washington, D.C. don't even visit your community, so they don't even know what's going on. So, <laughs> they don't even visit their own communities. Exactly, exactly. Nancy Pelosi's never been in the hood. Um, something happened yesterday. I was shot. And I don't know if my boys knew about it, but L.A. police is hiring illegals. Yep. Armed. And now they're arming them. <laughs> that is not going to turn out good. And I'm not saying that they're going to go and start shooting cops and whatnot. 
it's not going to turn out good for the home team because if you don't have any allegiance to this country, you're going to protect your own. The military's next. You know, yeah. Right. Exactly. They've already floated that idea. You know what I'm saying? Let me um let me get that. division, for example, should have about 375 police officers and said it has less than 300 and it is definitely making it hard to keep this community safe. One of the most famous streets on the globe, adorned in the names of the rich and famous. But lately, Hollywood's gotten a bad rap. Check everyone making contact. So we buckled up with LAPD to find out what's really going down. For the most part, Hollywood is relatively safe. This is Captain Ray Valois, head of LAPD's Hollywood division, who broke down crime stats in his area for us. Rapes and aggravated assaults are down compared to last year, but homicides have doubled, and robberies, the biggest constant problem in Hollywood, are up about 15%. You'll have a victim maybe walking back to their car from a night out, and a suspect will come up behind him with a gun and give me all your, give me all your money. Those are the ones that concern me the most. Um, and those are what I believe we had a spike in. Some of those robberies usually happen here on dark side streets like Selma Avenue off the main drag. And there's not a great deal of lighting on this street. So you'll have people who enjoy the, the clubs. Um, but then when they walk back to their cars, it's dark. They're by themselves. Driving down Hollywood Boulevard, LAPD's biggest challenge, manpower. Captain Valois says the entire department is down about 800 officers. Hollywood, for example, had a typical 26 officers deployed Monday morning. I got a question for you. What did you expect when the Democrats came out there and was talking about um, defund the police? Look at the district attorneys. You know, I was going to say it's. Not only do you not have police officers to enforce the law, once they get caught breaking the law, there's no consequence. And yeah. so why are people going to follow the law? They should have got a patrolman instead of a captain. I, I think that captain probably got lost on the way back to the station. <laughs> this is right. the first time he's been out in his car. <laughs> I mean, did, did, didn't that ring like that to you? I mean, I'm looking at this guy going, well, like that guy, right. That car looked new. It hadn't even <laughs> been shot up or anything. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> but no, the the hiring practices, uh, the hiring practices out in California are under uh, are under scrutiny. The people that are being hired right now should not be police officers. LAPD officers and LA City personnel. It's a danger. It's a it's a direct danger to the public. People directly involved in the LAPD recruiting and hiring process are going public for the first time with their concerns. We're just letting the floodgates open to people that shouldn't be on the job. Most of our sources asked us to protect their identities for fear of retaliation, but not James Williams. He supervised <laughs> LAPD police backgrounds for 20 years. Williams retired a year ago. I have nothing to gain from this but it's the right thing to do. Prosecute the police! After the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis in 2020, followed by massive protests across the country and anti-police sentiment, okay. Williams alleges the LAPD began making changes in its recruiting process. We were given direction to uh, focus more on diversity candidates, which we always have. Regardless of the candidate, they, the good ones always float to the top. But he says if the top tier candidates were not from a specific minority group. They didn't want them, so they, they sat on the shelf. I myself am a minority, and I completely believe in diversity in the department because that's what makes Los Angeles a great city. But we need to hire good qualified candidates that can do the job they started manipulating the standards and the guidelines which you know what happens when you hire junk you're gonna get junk that's a suicidal mindset the way they're talking there it is isn't it i mean if you got a society that has you know whatever representation of whatever race or whatever whatever you know really if you open up the hiring roles the people that want that job will, will apply 
you know, to try to do it by race or gender or anything is ridiculous to me. I mean, you see it spread across all sorts of different areas though. I mean, look at transportation, look at, look at any of the, the areas that have really enforced this affirmative action hiring quota over the past couple of decades, you, you see them just decaying at the top because you, as soon as you stop hiring the best candidates, you're done. It's just a matter of time. You know, um, this, this, uh, this really got to me, to tell you the truth. This really got to me because I, uh, when I saw that it was Ill- that they were hiring illegals, you know that they aren't going to be the first city to do it. They're, I mean, it's it's going to go out, and a- I mean, I think after um, the George Floyd thing, and actually there had been more than George Floyd, but I think what needed to happen. See, th- there needs to be a connection between the police department and the community. Yeah. Okay. There has to be a connection because most people, I mean, the police don't trust the people and the people don't trust the police. You know why? Hmm. Because they don't walk around anymore. The beat. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You. I mean, you they hide in these cars and the cars are damn near combat vehicles now. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And well, the cars are combat vehicles, and their uniform of choice is combat. I mean, yeah. when you see them coming out, regular police are wearing stuff that SWAT used to wear. Yep. Uh, or, and, and SWAT is wearing military stuff that, uh, you know, I mean, like... Uh, Even uh, a helmet. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. When they get out, when they get out of that SWAT vehicle, it's like, what's, what type of special forces unit is that, you know? Because they work much like the military. A couple of years ago, I went to work early in the morning. The sun was just coming up. And mm-hmm. I live on a nice residential street, man. I mean, it's like the reason I bought the place was because almost everybody around here owned their homes. You know, and so I, I bought it on purpose. And I come to the end of the street to the corner, and there's a freaking infantry platoon there. Mm-hmm. I'm going, what the hell is this? It, I mean, it was police, but they were dressed in... And, and battle dress uniforms, you know, with helmet, Kevlar helmets and M16s and everything else, M4s. And they launched a grenade through the window of this house. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking, damn, I called them up. I got to work because I couldn't stop them. They made me go through. I, I called them up at work, the police, and they wouldn't tell me anything. I was like, look, man, I live on that street. I want to know what the hell just happened. Right. And they, they were arrogant as hell. They wouldn't tell me. Yeah. That's not un- unacceptable. You know, the police started going downhill when two things happened. When the police unions got the cities to get rid of the beat cop, that was one. And the other one was after Rodney King. Instead of doing whatever you got to do to that guy out there, they took all the nightsticks away from the police in Pittsburgh. Wow. It's like you, you just you just guaranteed more people are going to get killed by taking that nightstick away. You know, I don't know. It's just I, I remember growing up. And guys, yeah. I knew that I knew all the cops' names. They all knew my name. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We played cat and mouse with each other. We had them you, come out to the schools, and yeah, and, and we had fire trucks come out to the schools too. But um, you know, the police would uh, drive their vehicles up and back of the back of the school. So when they got finished talking, we would go outside into the courtyard and look up, look inside the vehicle, and everything is going on and stuff, and. It, so I mean, but they, but it was that connection, and and I mean, look, it's always been tense. Yeah. But what, but what it is today is so out of control. It's, it's crazy. And again, if this is your first time watching the show, we're um, we're talking about how the um, L.A. Police Department is hiring illegals um, for their police force, and they and and now they. It just came down. It just passed. They're giving illegals guns. I mean, these people don't even really have drivers. Well, they might have driver license now. But can we just know, carve California off and make it its own country? I'm so sick of California. You people, it's crazy. Uh, look what you people are doing to yourselves. Yeah, I was gonna say it. It's not just California. It's all these big cities. You know, because I'm from Minneapolis and. Minneapolis is a freaking war zone. I mean, where the George Floyd incident happened, 
I mean, this dude's hopped up on drugs, passed out in his car, walks in passing counterfeit bills. And that's just a normal day at this store. That, that wasn't like, oh, my God, what, what are we going to do? And, mm. and I mean, so take these these urban inner cities and make them all dependent on government assistance. Tell them that they're owed reparations and make them all mad at Whitey. And then throw in a bunch of illegal immigrants that you're giving more and better assistance to, and then put those guys in charge of the police force. And how does this end? I mean, it's yeah. all press, my press one for English is how it ends. Right. Um, how can you be a, a cop? Me. The hiring standards are created by POST, the Commission on Peace Officer Standards and Training. Candidates have to go through the peace officer selection process that includes a written exam, physical ability test, and background investigation. Well, they should be able to get through that physical ability. I mean, if they didn't climb over a wall. They walked thousands of miles. <laughs> They're in pretty good shape. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, look. That um, you know that ground thing in the military where you crawl on your belly and stuff. They should be experts at that. Yep. All law enforcement agencies in California must abide by those guidelines if they want certification for their academies and officers. They wanted to go below those. Can't do that. It's illegal. We're governed by uh, post standards. We're governed by government codes as well williams claims it didn't matter to the department he and other sources say the lapd is making it too easy to be an officer because of a staffing crisis they're not waiting for the best possible candidate to come by almost feels like they don't have that time to do it they want to meet the numbers now so what were the standards before compared to now so the physical fitness qualifier you're supposed to have at least a 50 percent to get into the academy uh, we're now hiring people with 40 30 and in some cases lower than 10 percent physical scores Damn. what they're doing is not helping they're creating doubt in the public's mind chief michael moore says the lapd is not lowering the standards but the hiring practices have evolved through the years when you're eliminating people to be a member of this organization because you can't run a mile and a half in 12 minutes. Uh, you gotta ask yourself when's the last time an officer ran a mile and a half and understand it. Is that still relevant? Our yeah. sources say the written exam is a lot These easier here because pay. now it's a multiple choice test. The written exam, we've had that test for years. And since I've gotten there, they've, uh, they've eased up on the, uh, the standards of that written exam. We moved to a multiple question test in place of a narrative because we saw that the narratives were, were judged subjectively. They <coughs> were not consistent as far as people who passed or who didn't pass. In the past, a background investigation revealing a candidate's bad credit or financial problems could have resulted in rejection. You know what, too? You know what, too? This, 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 this multiple tests after and everything, and you probably find an Americans that can't qualify. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because Americans, well, uh, yeah, 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 I'm gonna say it. I'm, I'm not happy to say it, but I said it before. America has gotten stupid over the years. Yep. Yes, they have on purpose. Yes, on purpose. And they're, I mean, they're preparing everybody to be good slaves. Exactly. Exactly. You, you will eat what we give you. Yep. And you will not it. say anything, and you will take what you will take what we put in front of your um, plate, and you will smile. Okay. Yes, sir, boss. I sure will. But yeah, though, I mean, not only are they cutting these standards back, they're cutting the standards back for college. They're cutting the standards back for uh, 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 for for so many things. <laughs> Hell, they're cutting the standards back for Congress. Many of those people up there don't know what the Constitution really is. I look, I told you, next time anybody, anybody out there that's watching this show, next time that you get close to one of the members of the Congressional Black Caucus, ask them about Amendment uh, 412. See what they say. Ask them about Amendment 412 and how that affects Americans. And see what they say. If they start saying, well, um, yeah, yeah th that's one of our most important amendments. Call them out on it. You know, there's only 26. 
He's only 26. Ask him what and year the ask him what year the war of 1812 was fought. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Or Nikki Haley with the with the uh with the how Civil hard War is it to say Civil War? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you know what Tim? I, I have to look I have to say something about what she said because in thinking about what she said, she didn't complete the answer. And I, I don't know whether she was scared or, or whatnot, but yeah, some of what she said w- was true. She, she just would, didn't complete the answer. They they didn't complete the question either. Yeah. The yeah. question should have been, uh, being that you're the governor for the first state to secede from the union, what do you think? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's and, like, also, <laughs> and also, you took down the, uh, the, the flag. Uh, yeah, state flag. flag. Yeah. Yeah. But no, she, you know, she was like, well, what do you want me to say? See, stop being sensitive. And start being factual about stuff. People will will accept factual when you are straight with them, and that's and that's something that we try to tell people here um, on this show. If we had more people that were factual, we wouldn't be in the predicament that we are today. I want to um, give a shout out to all of our Twitter um, followers. Um, that are watching the show and um, and 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 that have increased our views over the past few um, past past week and a half or so. I want to give it. Uh, thank you, Elon. You know, and that really, you know, I really don't do that too much. But thank you so much for allowing Twitter to uh, for opening this up so that um, people can on Twitter can watch this. I do appreciate. it. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking at going into 2024. Uh, one of the major top issues is illegal immigration. It is that's just what it is. You're seeing thousands and thousands of people coming across the border like this. It's ridiculous, you know. And you know, I, I'm like when seeing in a lot of it. I think is people haven't. Um, it hasn't touched them yet. Yeah. So they don't think it's real, you know, right. uh, but I'll tell you what, once you figure it out, it's going to be too late. Yeah. Right. When, when CNN runs something like about immigration right now. Yeah. It's becoming a real top issue here. So the top issue facing the nation, look, the economy is still number one. It was number one in August. It's number one now, but take a look at the immigration slash border security. It was just at 11% in August. Look where it's hopped to now. 19 percent. So it's closing in on the economy and a number of different polls I've looked at. Immigration and border security is running a closer second place to the economy as we head into 2024. And you might be thinking, though, OK, this is just Republican voters who are feeling this way. But I want you to take a look here because I think this is rather interesting. The most Google searches for migrants by state. Look at all these states, Phil. They're all blue states. Illinois is one. New York is two. Massachusetts is three. New Jersey is four, Colorado is five, and of course, there's been a lot of talk about the migrant crisis in both Illinois and New York, and it seems like even voters in those states, very blue states, states that Democrats win in general elections almost always, they are focusing on this issue as well. Yeah, right they are, because when you push Americans into a corner, sooner or later, Americans are going to get tired of being pushed into the corner, and the only way that they know how to come back is come right back at you. They can't go left. They can't go right. It's coming right back at you. And you are destroying their homes. You're destroying their state. You're treating Americans less than zero. You can, you might as well say they caused it. Where were they a year ago, two years ago? Right. They act like they just figured this out. They sat there and they lied to their audience and told their audience that the number three issue to American voters, the number three issue is guns. Give me a break, man. Well, and it's funny, too, all this sending people into, we just keep moving around, ways hitting <laughs> buttons. Sorry about that. I I, I I hit the thing, and I went back. I My, my, my screen went back. I was cleaning off the thing. But, yeah, they, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, as far as I'm concerned, every illegal immigrant should be sent to every sanctuary city and state in the nation. 
And if I were governor of a state that didn't wasn't a sanctuary city or state, I would take the illegals and say, I can't remove them from America. I'm going to round all of them up and I'm going to send them to a sanctuary city. If you are an illegal and you are in my state, and that's what I'm waiting for one of these guys to do. I can't believe to- it's taken so long. Right. I mean, right. Abbott, what if what a fraud Abbott is? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and what did you say um, before before this year? We didn't know what Eagle Pass. Did he hear an Eagle Pass? We've been getting slammed with two to three thousand people a day, and it's just a, an unfair, unethical situation. What's going on here in Eagle Pass? We feel ignored by the federal government. Mm-hmm. Where's your state government at? You know, right. I, that's the thing that gets me. I, I can't believe there's something. I mean, these guys got troops, these right. governors. You know, put them all, do a, ju- a sheriff Arpaio, put them all inside a fence. Yep. You know what? You're right. You're right. Where, where, where is where is the state government? You're right. right. You're right about that. Because um, if they're, <laughs> you can tell if if they've been. Um, they're part of this. On that, second on that government. Dependency, yeah. you Kemp. know, you can tell you know, who they are. New, they're part of it. Yeah. It's like, oh man, this is this is my um. There's a caravan coming across. I, I think it's up to nine thousand. Brought to you by the Republican Governors Association. Yes. <laughs> Funded by George Soros. Yep. They've got maps. They've got lists of where to go when they get here. <laughs> mm-hmm. And checks. And uh, checks. We, and we we have set up your bank account. Um, the money will be there. Uh, what gets me about that? What gets me about that photo or this video is how they're crawling from underneath that thing. Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, man! What's amazing too is not a single person in that video who just climbed under the wall is going to be removed from the United States, right? Think well, I mean, look, look, their court case is in 2031. Right. Seven years. This is, this is new world order. So notice one thing about these millions of immigrants. Not one of them's a white dude. Right. Yeah. And I mean, there's very few women and children. It's mostly military age men. And, I, you know, I wouldn't even have went down that thought process if it wasn't for that Operation 912 that Miles Glow talked about about being in the middle of George Floyd and everything else. This, this isn't just lefty Americans. This is a, this is war. Well, I tell you what, it, one might not be the white dude, but there's a whole lot of white dudes up in Congress that are getting paid from it. I agree a hundred percent. And they're getting paid Chinese money. Yeah. Well, and the Republican I elite, agree, yeah. they're fine with these folks. Cause they want people to, you know, they they want to get their housekeeper. They want to get their gardener. They want to get. They the, believe the chaos neighbor. is coming, right? Okay. The people in the people in D.C. believe chaos is coming, and the only way, uh, the only way that um, that they can do that is they have to get rid of the police, which which they're doing. They're getting rid of um, uh, military. And, and military. They've already. Jet- they already changed that over to a social look, experiment. Look what they've done to our reproductive status in America. Right. Yeah. You think that's by yeah. accident? Mm. No. Yeah. And religion has changed. What was it? Last year, we, we saw that Christianity was at the lowest point it ever has been in the United States of America. Yeah. Well, yeah. guess what? What do you expect? If you allow people from other countries, other religions to come into this country, they're going to start to outnumber the the the, the Christians that are in this country. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that Christians. Well, you know, if Christians are coming into this country illegally, then there's something wrong with the Christianity. Um, but if you if you fill a country with people that don't belong to it, the country's going to fail. And you, and and you've probably seen that throughout history, but you probably never thought it would happen to the United States of America. You probably you probably never thought it would happen to us, and it's happening right in front of our eyes. And when when I say 
I think I posed this question to y'all to bring you in yesterday, but if I haven't, I, I know throughout the year I have, um, you just have people that aren't active anymore, um, aren't active for the fight. They rather complain. They think complaining is it. And while they're complaining, things are being destroyed in America. Things are being taken down. You know? I mean, we have we have good-hearted people that watch this show. But I have said that I think the young people that we have right now, they need to be a, a, a little bit more vibrant, a little more, have a little bit more vigor and strength. Because I know when I joined or when I left the Democrat Party 12 years ago, we were out there. We were out there. Okay, we were in Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Florida, uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Florida. Uh, we even went to South Carolina, Texas. We were all over the place. We were trying to do what we could do, however we could do it. As a matter of fact, I was with the Tea Party Express one time. And I went from Arkansas all the way up to Minnesota. We ended up in Minnesota. Yeah, we ended up. Yeah, yeah. It was it was nice up there. As a matter of fact, that the airport up there was crazy. I that's when I knew. Airport. That's when I knew we were in trouble. Because uh, uh, I walked in, you know, I'm, I'm at the Minnesota airport, and I go into one of those places where you eat, and they didn't have nobody serving anybody anything. They had iPads on the table. <laughs> I was like. Where are the people? Oh, I have to order from the iPad here? And then I put my card here? Wow, Welcome to bad. every fast food restaurant in California this year. <laughs> $20 an hour minimum wage. Okay. Wow. That's neat. That, that's they neat. did, too. Pizza Hut canceled all delivery. Yep. In the whole state. What? They, they fired all, all their delivery, delivery drivers. You know why? You, uh, uh, well, guess what? You know why, don't you? Because minimum wage, and and it's also gotten to the point that um, a lot of these drivers are illegal, <laughs> and a lot of these drivers are illegal. And many of these drivers, how many? How many of you out there right now are using Instacart or a food delivery service? And when the food comes to you, it smells like weed. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't I, use those services, man. I'm not. I, I'm not trustful <laughs> enough. It smells like weed, man. Dude, I was I mean, in this deli, man, and and I'm sitting there. I eat in the deli. I got a sandwich in there. My wife and I is in there, and mm -hmm. they got this this like stand next to the door with all the to go, all the Uber driver orders or whatever they're called, DoorDash. And I see this old Chinese dude. He comes in there, right? Way too old to be one of these drivers, mm -hmm. but he comes in there. My man went through every bag on that rack. <laughs> he touched everybody else's. I mean, no, that's I, ain't, up. I ain't doing that's that. Messed up. I don't trust people enough. Yeah, that's my stuff. Yeah, and, and plus, and plus that ring camera. I have a I have a front door camera too now, but there are there are um, there are channels out there where. People are uploading their ring cameras and stuff, and you're 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 seeing people because people don't have people don't have, so they think that they can take, and they come up to your door and they take a picture of the food that you're supposed to get. Take they take it, a buddy. picture and send it to you, and then take the food. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of world, man? Jeez. Um, and I know, and I know. Yesterday, I was talking about this. Um, uh, I think this is, I think this is going to be big in 2024 or in the 2024 or 2025. I think the police are going to, are going to get their hands on this. And when the police get their hands on this, I think it's going to go into the communities and it's over. I think it's over. That That's, that's, you know, that's. Yeah. I'm not into know. that, man. I don't like that at all. That's, I mean, for real. I'm That's glad I'm not. Crazy. I'm glad I'm not 18. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. You know what else is going to be like that? Look at that. Look. That's going to be your your uh, romance too. All right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, 
They already got that on there. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny as I was going through the old news from this year. I had tweeted in like the spring. We had talked about the drones and there was a video from a drone manufacturer where they load them with like single shot bullets or or small explosives. And then they can just geotag you or or tag your signature. And then the drone just comes down and boom. I mean, it's going to change warfare, which would be crazy. It already has. Right. Look at all the mentions of drones in the Middle East right now. Oh, yeah. Even the Houthis have them. Even the freaking terrorists have them. Dude. But <laughs> it's not funny. But what happened on October 7th? Well, yeah. That they can't, they motor powered air gliders, man. I mean, did you see that Michael Flynn video that's been floating around the last couple of days? No, no. Oh, he, uh, he does a breakdown. He was on Alex Jones' show, and mm-hmm. basically he he goes into a lot of detail that we can't go on to on some of these platforms. Mm-hmm. Uh, but basically the his conclusion was there's no way. Like that border that they came across is one of the most secure borders in the world, and there is no way that they could have come across without some sort of no stand-down order. We, we had opined about that too where it's like, this is really weird. How do they get a thousand people coming across all these operation operational prep in such a surveilled area? So it'll be one of those questions that'll get answered 20 years from now. But it's it's funny because you look at that and you go, this is just weird. Like, I don't know exactly what happened. I just know this is weird. And this didn't happen like they said it was. Man, look at how many things are like that. The fires in Maui. Right. You know, we've already, I, I read a, a damn sad article today. We've already buried COVID. Yep. That's over. Nobody's nobody's talking about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody just wants to let it lie. When the things you think are the things that they did to us during COVID, it is comparable to World War II. Right. If you think about it. Well, and think about that Maui fire. I, I mean, that was like, barely a news cycle unless you're really plugged in deep to the news for a few days that story if if the media ever got into it i mean there's all sorts of wild stuff there or even obama chef like that was there and gone i mean talk about a mysterious the las vegas shooting i mean you know these things are they're all unanswered and it's it's like it's that like our whole population's shooting. asleep yeah right? that that las vegas shooting um, there should have been marches on Washington about that one because um, for that not to for Americans not to have some resolution with that one still um, I mean January 6th too I mean there's still people there's thousands of people in jail however many there I don't know exactly how many a lot that um, that um, the Las Vegas shooting were almost reminded me of Kent State and, but they found the guy for Kent State. Kent, Kent, um, yeah, um, the guy at the tower. I'm the guy at the top of the tower. But for that thing to happen in Las Vegas, that thing was crazy. Um, Gianna Bailey says I was in Vegas when that happened. Wow. You know, is that's I mean, somebody shooting you from from shooting from a hotel to. What? And think about that for a second. When's the last time you were in a hotel that you could open the window? Yeah, right. That's true, too. That's well, true. It's illegal. Every yeah, it square is. inch of Las Vegas casinos, hotels has a is, camera on it. Is a, has a camera. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I mean, that guy yeah. had more armament in there than he had a lot of guns. But and you know what? There's no answer to it, really. I mean, here's the thing that I always. Uh, had questions about that one is like they said that he committed suicide. Don't said that all. the gun was in like um the gun was laid beside him or something or whatnot. But uh there was no blood or it was old blood or something. Yeah, I remember I, that. It, it was crazy. It's like, wait a minute, if you shoot yourself, if you you're not gonna lay yourself on the floor with the gun r- laid right beside you. You know, usually, pong. 
and you're right there. Yeah, I mean, unless <laughs> unless he didn't do a good job and they rolled in the floor and whatnot. But I was like, it it was just some things about that that just didn't work right. And then there was no camera on the floor. You know what gets me about these things too, and I mean it probably shouldn't, but it, it does. You know, is this are, are these if this is a top level covert sinister operation, why do they suck at it so bad? <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. is that is that the best they got? <laughs> well, well, here's the reason <laughs> they don't have to try hard. It's like blood, because, you gotta have blood, man. <laughs> well, they don't have to try hard because the media is just gonna completely ignore it. That's a good and, point. And people aren't even gonna know what happened. That is true. That I mean, true. talk to somebody. <laughs> that isn't on Twitter or isn't in the news or watching podcasts like ours, they don't even know Maui fires happened. They don't right. even know that that happened. They don't know how many people died. They don't know yeah. all the lands getting picked up by rich developers. They don't know that the rich people's houses didn't burn. They don't know any of that. And I bet you those rich people are, are, are doing a number on those people out in Maui right now. And the media is not following up on it. Yeah. Right. Did you guys hear something? I, I, I got a, a friend of mine who's not deep into this stuff as we are, called me up and asked me if I had heard about Oprah. Mm. And I hadn't heard about, have you guys heard about Oprah? About she's on the, on the run or something with some, about some child trafficking or something like that? No, she's not on the run. She, I mean, as a matter of fact, she just, she just did um, a TV spot about a new movie that she just put out. I mean, like I said, I hadn't heard anything either. That's what no, no. Me. no, she's not on the run, but uh, she, well, well, it depends on what you mean on the run, because if, if your friend is thinking that she left the country, no, but oh, if, but if she's skirting the question, if she's not answering, no, yeah, she's on the run from that. Okay. She's not answering the question and she's not talking about it. But um, no, she was trying to get money out, out there in Maui with the Rock. I remember for, that. Um, for the, oh, that was such a scam, too. Yeah, it's like what they put five million. They only put they only put five million dollars in it, and both of them are multi-millionaires. Well, so, no, it wasn't even that. It was worse than that, where they set up the foundation and they gave the money to themselves. And like their own, it was like, I'm going to start the Wayne Dupree uh, organization for money for Maui. And then they were soliciting donations to hopefully cover. So ultimately they were going to give out zero money of their own. Well, if that's the case, then somebody needs to prove that in, um, uh, for death in court, because that right there is embezzlement, um, big time. Um, here's Congress, I guess, holding us up, holding, and this is MSNBC. Uh, Cheerfulness McCormick, uh, who was recently elected in the 2022 20, election cycle, she actually uh, won a special election before then. Wait a minute, hold on, I didn't even know, I didn't even know this. She's not even in um, Congress a hot year. This this congresswoman is not even in Congress a hot being year. elected to a full term uh, in the 2022 general election. And uh, we don't know specifically what the House Ethics Committee is looking into. They're normally very private about these probes. But what we do know is that the committee has unanimously voted to form an in investigative subcommittee that will look in to these allegations of campaign finance violations. And they do list a number of specific things that they're going to look into, including uh, improper use of campaign finance funds. Also, the possibility that uh, there was someone volunteering for her campaign that didn't specifically work for the campaign or work for her official office. And while we don't know specifically what they are investigating, we do know that there have been questions raised about how Congresswoman Sherfa Lewis McCormick uh, used campaign funds, or I'm sorry, not campaign funds, but taxpayer funds to actually pay, pay for ads that ran in her congressional district leading up to her election. Here's the thing, and I know some people will agree not, and some people won't agree. Too. Yeah. To, um, black Democrats usually get caught up on ethics more than white Democrats um, because they don't know the game. They aren't taught the game. They aren't. You know, we 
me and Hutch talk about uh, the guy that had the money in the uh, refrigerator. Jefferson. Jefferson. There was another one. Um, Look at Menendez uh, with his gold bars <laughs> with serial numbers. Right. On. You know, uh, I mean, they, they, <laughs> they think that they're Hillary and Bill Clinton. They think that they can do stuff and stuff will roll off of them. This this um, this woman, Sheila McCormick, violating campaign finance law, failing to file proper financial disclosures, having an individual not employed by her handle office official work. That's what the House Ethics Committee is opening up an investigation. The same uh, health ethics committee that never said a damn word about Maxine Waters every year. Yep. That's oh, oh. She gets away with that piece of garbage gets every away with year. It, and this lady gets caught. Every year she gets away with that. Her damn daughter's making some money. Every year. Look, I, I mean, her daughter doesn't even have a job. Her daughter just gets paid at the beginning of the year. That's it. <laughs> you know? That's it. Oh boy. Whatever. But uh, she, um before that's before what that lady we, should do. She should go get some coaching for Maxine. Get learned the game. <laughs> I was gonna say it'll be interesting to know what this girl actually did. You know, because it's like Menendez, we were talking when they decided to go after Goldbar. It's like, you wonder what he did to make him mad. Yeah. Because they got dirt on everybody. Like what yeah. she's being yeah, accused right. of, I bet two thirds of the people in Congress have done something similar. But it's, you wonder if it's not maybe as a Democrat, because it's kind of like John Fetterman. I don't know if you've been following some of the stuff he's been saying. He I've been liking him a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> he's all in Carville's, but in Carville's <laughs> face now. Yeah, he showed him, he showed him, him Car- the front door. <laughs> Carville told him he's a gnat. Right? Mess with the mongoose. <laughs> I'll give you that, Carville. You look like a damn mongoose. You look like something <laughs> like ET. No. Well, Fetterman I mean, came he- out and said it's not racist to talk about we can't let 270,000 people across in a month. That's not racist or xenophobic. And you know, somebody on the Democrat side pulling him aside, going, John, John, we don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> John, that's not the program. I'm telling you, it's those it's those new wave drugs, man. They change them. They they, they you know they fixed we them. Were like, huh? yeah. yeah, they yeah, fixed they, them. Yeah, and we were going around and making fun. He don't even look the same. Yeah, yeah, it's those drugs, man. They changed right. him, man. Made him a straight Pennsylvania Republican. Um, <laughs> what well, hasn't that happened before? When like people have a stroke and all of a sudden they can speak a foreign language or they're really good at math. Uh, John, John Fetterman had a stroke and he woke up and he's a Republican. Started, Suddenly he's make America great. Started speaking in tongues. <laughs> right. Support that we receive from the federal government, we appreciate that. Uh, work authorization to put people on a pathway to sustainability, I certainly appreciate that. And without real significant um, investment from our federal government. It won't just be the city of Chicago that won't be able to maintain this mission. It's the entire country that is now at stake. But in no way, um, what the state of Texas is doing um, is helping the cause. As much as we recognize that there are challenges, significant challenges at the border, and we do need real substantive immigration reform and policies that allow us um, to have a structure and a mm-hmm. pathway um, to citizenship. But again, sending buses all over the state of Illinois and all over the country is reckless and, quite frankly, is dangerous. <laughs> What's up with uh, the point on the top of your head? Yeah, I don't even know what that fish I was going to say, between him and Lori Lightfoot, why do all the mayors of Chicago look like Batman villains? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I never understood that. Like, couldn't you see him, like, fighting Batman, going like, oh, hey, what's going on? <laughs> You know, enjoy yeah. your sanctuary city, Mayor. Yeah, I mean, you y'all made Chicago a sanctuary city. You right? know what? You, you know what I don't like about that? Why did the governor of Texas have to put that infection so far inside the United States? Why couldn't you just send them to the border? Why'd you have to bring them all the way into the Midwest? I, I don't like that move. Yeah, I think that's that's stupid. and Northeast too. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, I understand one time. You know, we were laughing. We thought it was funny. We thought it was cute. I could even say, I'm standing two times. You didn't get that message? Let's help you out again. Okay. 
but dude, you are fi- I um a uh uh what's his name in in Texas? Abbott. Abbott. You're filling this country up with illegals, man. <laughs> Indeed, that's my point. You, you are you well, you are they put them guys somewhere huh? on the border. Send them wherever back. it's send wherever it's back. easiest to push them over. Yeah, send yeah, them back to you Tijuana. Build a camp on the border to house five hundred thousand people. It's better than putting them in our second largest city, and New York, and New York. They're because destroying that city. That's our culture. Those yeah. cities go. Our country goes. And see, I I disagree. I think that the perfect response to this is to send the migrants to every sanctuary city in the United States. There is no reason the good people of Texas who don't want illegal immigrants should have to pay for and house and deal with all these people. And I understand the concerns, but if these people have bad intentions, the people that help them travel five bajillion miles from Mm -hmm. wherever to America, they're going to help get them around America. But as far as I'm concerned, I hope if if I were governor of Texas, I would take every illegal in Texas and I would send it to them. Here's your list of sanctuary cities. Which one do you want to go to? You are not welcome in Texas. You're an illegal immigrant. Except for Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, all the, all the liberal cities in, in Texas, which they all are. What do you, you know, mean? I'm, Texas is not all conservative. Right. right. There's sanctuary cities in Texas, too. Right. Right, Austin. Why, Why didn't you send it to Houston? Uh, I mean, if I mean, if that's if that's what I, you want to do, I liked it as a novelty. I, as a novelty, it was okay. Right, but, but not, yeah, you're just spreading the cancer. About it. No, guys, the I'm just pulling up about it. immigration and customs enforcement data. There are no sanctuary cities in Texas. Well, maybe that term was wrong, but there's liberal leftist Marxist. There are leftist cities, but I mean, and, there's well, a well, list right on well, the immigration what, website. What, hold on, hold on, hold on, because if you are talking about sanctuary cities, the uh, the Daily Wire did a flyover of a city, or a a a, um, a, a, what they, a a construct where they are building up areas to put the illegal. Immigrants in Texas. In Texas. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. yeah, no, they're okay. they're they're putting so, up camps for them. Right. So, but but the idea is you don't let them in. I mean, it's but they can't let not let them in, is what I'm saying. Well, I'm sure I'm well, I'm sure that you can stop that. No, I'm you sure can't. That, That's the yeah. whole issue. Is the stop. is the Biden administration is prohibiting them from letting them into the country. So they're That's here. A, Okay, that's the Texas border, right? Yeah, but they can't legally stop them from coming in, Wayne. But that's illegally. the Texas border, though. Right? Well, what do you mean? You're saying that Abbott himself can't protect since he's the executive of... He's a president, basically, of Texas. He He's the executive. You're saying that he can't protect... His no, state. not legally. Oh, I'm sure. I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure. Based on everything that he's doing right now, I'm sure that it would have went to the Supreme Court if he would have stopped stuff from coming in there. Because what you're saying right now, and again, we were laughing when he first did it, but in sending everybody to all of these states and whatnot, it is it is uh, accelerated. Uh, um, the destruction of a whole lot of these cities where Chicago had to come out and say, oh, guess what? We, we're giving them $9,000 worth of, of, of money a month for six months. $9,000 a family. No state can remove an illegal immigrant from the country. It has to be done federally by the federal government. And that's the conflict. The federal government is letting them in pending their court case. So Texas has no legal authority unless they want to secede or revolt against the federal government to not let them in. Once they're in the country, even though it's illegal, they have free movement around the United States, just like any American citizen, unless unless Texas wants to do something that will bring on civil war, which I'm for, as far as I'm concerned. Does but Abbott, you can encourage people to leave Abbott the city. Have- does Abbott have 
the the uh, uh, the permission. Uh, does Abbott have the authority to send to put illegals on a bus and send them yes. to certain cities? Yes, he cannot send them outside of the country. He can't kick them out of the country, but he can send them anywhere in the United States. Well, the other side of that coin is the federal government is required by law to protect Texas from invasion. Yeah. Right. So if they don't do their part, I think there's a case that Texas got to do their own thing. I agree Guard. that one of, and and this is where we're going to this is where it's going to go. We had that guest on talking about states rights versus federal rights mm -hmm. last week. At some point some state is going to say the federal government's not doing their job. Because enforcing immigration is a federal responsibility and not a state responsibility. And at some point, they're going to fight. And that's what we're waiting for is one of these states to say, no, illegal immigrants aren't allowed in my state. But no yeah, state Ab has Abbott's done not going to be the one. Right. Abbott's a, Abbott is a World Economic Forum guy. Right. He's, he's down with this. Right. I just... I just think that it's wrong to send. I mean, I think it's funny, but then when you look at the outset of where, because they're not staying in these cities either. Well, they're not okay. staying in Texas. Well, I mean, right. I mean, they, well, yeah. Abbott's making sure of that. I'm it's, saying. It's just, we're going to have to, if we don't want to, if we want to preserve our country, let me give you an example. Look at Minneapolis 20 years ago and look at it right. today. That's because of immigration. Yes. You know, and that's going to happen. If we, if we allow that to happen in every one of our cities, oh, yeah. God help us. We're already allowing it is what I'm saying. Texas, actually, the reason I like what they're doing is they are taking this problem and they're bringing this problem to people that support it. Because it's really freaking easy to be sitting up in Chicago. But it's, creating, but it's creating a bigger problem for Americans in those cities too, right? Well, yeah, and it should. If these are the dumbass cities that want open borders and sanctuary cities, and they're the ones passing the legislation, I mean, but you're up, seeing, but you're yeah. seeing those people in the cities say no. You're seeing the voters in those cities, right? That are, and that that's are because they're and faced with the problem. No. If they okay. weren't faced with the problem, and you weren't shipping those people in there, they wouldn't they give would, two shits, Wayne. No, no, they would. I mean, especially here in Baltimore when Obama was. All right, you think Chicago's going to care about immigrants? If yeah, it isn't yeah, yeah, on yeah, their yes, front yes, step? yes, yes. Oh, you know why? The dumbest you know, idea I, I've ever heard, Wayne. I know, I know, because you're from Minnesota. You really don't talk to the people in Chicago. If you look at the videos from the people in Chicago, they're tired of people getting put before them, and because the immigrants were sent there. No, if the right. immigrants before weren't that, sent though, there, they wouldn't have cared. Right. But before that, Jay, they were being sent there by the federal government. Right. Okay. By the federal government. Obama was doing it all before uh, before uh Abbott. Okay. You had you you had black uh Americans, you had white Americans, you had these people coming on the man on the street saying, We don't want these people here. Right, you have voters doing but their it. politicians have them as a sanctuary city, so the, send right. them every goddamn right. illegal. As far as I'm concerned, uh, there's but, there's about 400 cities well, in the United States. Well, then, 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 then everything that you see right now, then that, then we put your name on it. Then. Yeah, we put give, your name on it. absolutely. Call it the Jason Robertson legislation and let these cities feel the pain for all the policies that they're instituting and supporting. They're not going to learn until they feel the pain. Really? Well, all of those illegals are getting more money. All of those illegals are yeah. getting more benefits. Then maybe all, the people will vote all of those the illegals are the now getting police force, police force jobs. Right. Because you, and because you agree with moving them into those cities Okay, because you want who to feel the pain? The politicians or the people? I want the people that voted for the politicians that support these stupid ass policies 
to that's feel what the I said pain earlier. So they start holding people, differently. But but that's what I said earlier. If you go on YouTube and you start looking, even TikTok, even even Twitter. But if you go on some of these things, you start looking at the people. The people are complaining. And you look they at the history. Be. You look at the history of politics in Chicago. The voters don't mean shit. You know what? There was a there was a quote that um, Mark Twain uh, put out, and I and I put it out on my Twitter this morning. If vote made a difference, they wouldn't let us do it. That's right. right. I mean, you look at they they just had that that horrible mayor before, and they had an election, and they they had voted in some voted in somebody worse than her. Right. Yeah. 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 But that here's dude. what I'm saying. That Too dude. often conservatives bear the brunt, conservative cities, states, and citizenry for the left's stupid policies. And these leftist cities that are instituting these policies should feel the pain. Say I mean, again. where are all the Democrat voters from? The Democrat voters are from these big population centers. Did you say did you say conservative cities? Yeah. No, Eagle Pass, any... Texas is conservative. They're well, getting demolished because Joe Biden won't enforce it. Well, before that, Barack Obama was sending them to Baltimore, Chicago, Good. New York. Let them have them. And 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 but again, we were fussing with that. Right. We were fussing with that. Don't send them to American cities. That but they're see, gonna be in a city anyways. Why not send it to the cities? That want it. Well, then, if, where else would you send them, Wayne? Home, home, man. But that's home. not an option that our it government is option. going to do. Greg Abbott can't send them home. Turn it around. Turn the plane. Oh, well, bro, don't turn the plane. Greg around. Abbott can't do that. Turn the bus around. They got a strand. They got a. They got a strand of um, Hupticoff. Send them home. You know, I know, I know. Y'all looking at me like, what? Hoopty call. Some kind of god darn disease. Send them home. Governor in America does not have the authority to remove people from the nation. President of the United States does not have the authority to let all these people in. Right. And who's going to prosecute? It's time them? to fight them. Yeah. Right. But I mean, then we're talking civil war. Grab whatever, it. whatever. It, it, we shouldn't be sitting here talking about where we're going to put all these people. Right. We ought to be sitting here shutting the, the spigot off. But it's not going to happen. So what I'm saying is the people that have authority to do things, I fully support what they're doing. You're saying that it's not going to happen. Trump said that he's going to shut the thing down. That's why we need and, Trump. And, and actually, and actually, to tell you the truth, he shut it down. Okay? He did shut it down. He stopped them from coming in here when right. he was president. So it can happen. Okay? Right. It can happen. So I mean that 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 uh but 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 to give them carte blanche to just ship them to the cities and stuff and to hurt Americans like that, I can't I can't I can't agree with that, especially with what has happened to Baltimore. I mean, and and again, this was this happened way before that. This happened in the dead of night when um he dropped them off in the Dru Druid Hill, and Druid Hill is inside the city. Where a whole lot of black. Um, oh, Americans, I think it should um, go to the rich leftist neighborhoods myself. Never, you happened. know, the Marsh's Vineyard. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the map of sanctuary cities, there's a ton up in Portland area, San Francisco. There's a bunch on the East Coast. I mean, we shouldn't just be putting them in urban centers. We should be putting them in these in these rich affluent areas. Here are your buses. You, all you rich white liberals, you want sanctuary cities. You want open. Borders here they are. Open the up your gas room. Here, here's the thing, though. You know, you, you gotta you gotta look a couple steps ahead. We're this when we're doing this when we're dispersing these people all over the place. It's going to make it that much harder to get them out of here. You really think anybody's going to get them out of here? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Trump said he was going to do it. I hope Leo Holman does. said it too. And it's something that we need to get a backbone so we have the audacity to do it. It's our freaking and it's been house. done before. It's been, it's been yeah, done and it was called it was called Operation Wetback. Wetback. Yeah. Was, I'm just saying the before. only way that happens is if you make it such a big and visible deal that the that even people on the left support it. 
So by shipping these people into some of these neighborhoods. But that's what you have right now. That's what you have, right? What I'm saying is if President Trump comes in and goes into Chicago, says, hey, guys, you got these 20,000 illegal immigrants here. Are you okay if I kick them out of the country? They're going to say yes. That's my opinion. Obama was shipping illegals into Minnesota and other states long before Biden. Yeah, I know. I agree with that. I agree with that. And, I mean, he was doing it, <laughs> you know, um, he was doing it when he flew that Ebola over here on uh, first class. Yeah. Man, remember uh, that. But I mean, they, I mean, uh, but they weren't known as sanctuary cities back then. They were, he was just dropping them in the cities. He was, he was dropping them in the cities and letting them go for what they were for, for broke. He was dropping them off in the major cities and the major cities are mostly run, run by, uh, liberal heads because the conservatives don't, well, the conservatives went into um, the suburbs and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I mean, in 2024, well, w what we're seeing right now, we're seeing 18,000, 20,000, what, a month? No, no, a day. Is there saying a day or, or, or less? I don't know. Last year was 2.3 million encounters yeah. at the southern border. If you add on the northern border, it was over 3 million. This year, the projections I've seen are over 3 million. And that million. doesn't include people that came in illegally. So Jeez. we're looking over 8 million just that we know about. Todd Benzman warns of new incoming caravan with U.S. already experiencing 15,000 crossings a day. Yep. 15, okay. So, you know, I mean... It... <laughs> I was thinking about the border patrol last night. I was like, you know, I was almost a border patrol member. Really? really? Very close. I just, they didn't sign up for this. I mean, they did, they signed up for this, but they didn't sign up for this. Mm -mm. Okay. This is, I mean, this is, this is wrong on every step. This is wrong on every step. And you know, this, this little talk of impeaching Mayorkas. Mayorkas needs to be, well, I, I can't. Somebody got in trouble for. Um, Telling the oh, truth. Yeah. <laughs> Bo, Bo Duke got in trouble. <laughs> yes, Bo Duke did. got in trouble. So I can't say what Bo Duke said. But Not Mayorkas unless you need, want the FBI to show up at your I house. I know, right? <clears throat> you know. But no, um. For 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 everything that has happened down there, the mindset has to change to where, okay, if it takes Trump, then let Trump do it again. But the mindset has to be, you would think that the people in Congress, a Republican-led Congress, would put forth some type of legislation to shut that border down. They have now, HR2 passed a hundred and... 58 days ago, I think. The House passed immigration to reform. Shut it down. To shut yeah, it down. The House passed, uh, I think the bill name, and somebody can fact check me in the chat. They passed uh, Bill HR, <coughs> and I want to say it was 158 days ago, and it's sitting on the Senate. The Senate's not going to uh -huh. do anything with it. Yeah. That's the, that's the issue. That should piss everybody off. That's it should. Issue. I mean, here's here's why I like the busing move is there are places in the world that illegal immigration and 17,000 people isn't a reality. And so they don't support shutting down the border. People in Chicago, watch the videos. They're begging President Trump to come in and clean this up. And that's only going to happen, unfortunately. And I agree with all the security. I agree with all that. But it's only going to happen by putting this problem on their doorsteps. And and it's going to make the cleanup harder. I wish we could keep it localized till Trump wins in 2024, but we're not. I mean, when Trump is sent or when when Abbott or these guys are sending all these people, to these inner cities that are financially ruined and they're unsafe and you got these migrants, how many of those people are going to vote for Trump versus when they're calling him a racist and, you know, kids in cages and they get their news from TikTok? 
these these neighborhoods are no longer getting their news from TikTok. They're no longer got AOC in her white dress going, oh. you know, they're like, holy shit, this is a lot of people, and we just can't do this. So shut it down. Shut down I'm, surprised, I'm surprised at the citizens of Texas. You know, you, you remember when the Bundy Ranch happened? Why didn't that happen down there? You know, when it, when the people stood up against the the uh, agents on the Department of the Interior situation. Well, Bundy just had to surrender his ranch. That's why. Did he really? Yeah, I saw a, a news article in the last week or so where I didn't. I don't know all the details, so I might have some facts wrong. But oh, where crazy. they they finally they finally got him, and he had to surrender his ranch. But that's why. You know what? <laughs> The American people have shown the government they're living in fear. They're cowards. That the government really isn't all that. Right. Uh, Waco destroyed the FBI. Bundy and them forced the FBI to back up. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Those people were out there and the more uh, the more they stood against the government. The more people showed up on the American on, on Bundy side on horses with guns and everything. They 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 stood down satellite those, phones. Yep. They. Oh my God! I was like, oh well. Now this looks like a civil war getting ready to happen right here. I was going to say that that's what it's going to take. We've talked about the civil war and all that stuff. It is going to take someone somewhere, a city, a state someone to stand up to the federal government and say this is not working for us and there's so a step in between though it doesn't have to go right to civil war you know you no. got a thing called civil disobedience you know you gotta you gotta it, it's a game of one upsmanship somebody's got a blink you know and and it's risky but what's the alternative just being sheep because that's yeah, where but- we're at right now but that's what I'm saying. If you're a conservative and you're going to take that stand, what are they going to do to you? You want to go, you want to be January 6th? I'm I'm saying it's going to take a Unfortunately, political- that's the only way that this is going to reverse itself is by some action. Right. I mean, we can we can we can wait and see what happens in 2024, but don't be surprised if nothing happens. You know, you I'm just saying it. until the populace takes power back from the government, especially the overreaching federal government, it's not going to happen. And that's why we need to, like all these people that say are crazy politicians or crazy MAGA people, we need one of them to get elected and actually stand up and say enough's enough. Like, give, give, me, a, give me a governor of Texas that would actually... Like, say, we're just going to remove all the illegal immigrants. Like, we think it violates the Constitution and create a crisis. You know, right now they're kind of doing it, sending people around. Governor DeSantis wants to prove he's all big and tough. There are things that a governor could do to try to encourage that conflict with the federal government. By the way, he's done. He Um, is done. Our outlook. As I said, this is our last show for the year. Uh, we usually don't broadcast on Friday and uh, New Year's on Monday. We'll be back on Wednesday. We will be back on Wednesday um, because I don't want you to see three drunk men <laughs> up here on Tuesday uh, falling over herself. <laughs> Start Civil War right now. You know, I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> um. So uh, we'll be back here on Wednesday, uh, January 3rd, okay? But uh, be safe. Be safe this weekend, okay? Uh, Don't get in trouble. Try not to get in trouble. Uh, Call individuals that you probably haven't called in a long time. Send texts to people that you probably haven't sent texts to in a long time. And wish them a happy new year. Surprise them. Send them a happy new year. And you can send us a couple thousand dollars. But um, so with um with with that said, stay prayerful for 2024 because you're getting ready to see, and I and I don't think I'm using this term loosely, 
because y'all can always send us a couple thousand dollars. But um, you're getting ready to see a year that you probably you're getting ready to see some things next year that you probably never seen before. Um, hell, we've tried to get you ready. Uh, again, we don't have all the answers, but we, you know, we do have, you know, we do try to keep you informed and updated on some things, but we're getting ready to get into some things. There's a whole lot of court cases. You have uh, primaries that are getting ready to, to start up. Uh, you have challenges um, on the Democratic side that probably are going to see some court issues too, uh, with especially with Robert Kennedy running his independent um, stuff. And he got numbers. He got numbers. Um, in a three-way split, he got numbers. Uh, but I'm asking each of you to uh, stay careful and um, be careful and stay prayerful about 2024. It, I, I, I don't think it's the last year in our existence, but um, some things are going to be exposed. Many things are going to be exposed and people are going to be exposed for who they are, and uh, we're asking you to stick along with the Wayne Dupree podcast next year um, as we get into it. This is your election station for 2024. We're going to be talking to you, some candidates. We're going to try to get President Trump back on so we can find out what's on his mind. But, um, you know, we just, uh, we've been here for 12 years. Next, year's, next year we'll be lucky 13. And, um, uh, we're happy. We're happy to be doing it. And to both of my compadres, be safe. Uh, whatever you're watching, send in the chat so that you know we can see what you're watching. If you're cooking something, send it in there too. Uh, but other than that, I'm gonna uh, give last thoughts of the year to J. Rob, and then he's gonna give it to Hutch. And then we're going to get ready to get out of here. So um, if y'all want to send a couple thousand dollars to us, you can. <laughs> Start the new year off with no, the bank. No, no gold bars, please. No gold bars. No, I'll no, take no. a Menendez gold bar. I'm not above that. Who's going to give you change? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in his cage. But yeah. Okay. Uh, with that said, go, Jay. I, I was going to say, Wayne Hutch, it's been an honor to be on the show all year. I uh, it, It's a blast. I love getting on here, talking politics and arguing with you. Uh, Happy New Year to the viewers. And uh, it's spectacular. We've got such a great community online, in the chats, that that have a lot of things. Uh, they, they make us smarter, and hopefully we make you guys smarter. Um, but my thought going into 2024, folks, it's we're going to face – an unprecedented year with all these different things coming to a head and between court cases, what they're doing with Trump Supreme court, they're going to totally go after the Supreme court this year. They're going to push for expanding the court. It's you're going to see more things than you've ever imagined that are changing of the nation and people that watch shows like this are going to know about that. People mm -hmm. that don't aren't. That's why it's important when you watch shows like this that you share it. Share with somebody you might not politically agree with. And, and that was kind of my point about the buses. They were bringing this migrant crisis to people that didn't know it was a problem. And shows like this, when they go to pack the Supreme Court, it we're going to talk about it. We're going to bring you the news. We're going to bring you the facts. And then it's going to be important that you share that with other people. So as you get ready for next year, the more we can inform the population about what's going on, the more, because we need all Americans to be pissed off and rise up. Because if we don't, we're going to lose this country. And mm -hmm. on that, I'll turn it over to Hutch. All right, everybody. It's been a, a, an interesting year. Uh, do yourself a favor, and all three of us have other other irons in the fire. Jason has that with the American Tribune. Yep. Wayne, Wayne's on the radio in Baltimore every Sunday. I've got Cold War Radio. Go to coldwarradio.net Monday, mm -hmm. Wednesday, and Friday at 8, the radio show. Uh, we got to really spread this message. That's the key. Yep. That's mm -hmm. the real key. Um, Victor Davis Hansen has a, an article out there saying basically what uh, Jason said in a little bit more detail about the, the razor's edge 
Uh, we've been relatively silent for several weeks, but something's going to break very soon in about five or six different major, major areas. There's so much going on. But, hey, we'll be with you as long as we are. Have a happy Absolutely. new year. That's it. Hope that y'all, um, once again, have a great New Year's. Be safe. And um, we'll see you on the other side. Happy New Year. I'm going to tell it to you straight. I'm going to tell you the truth. Our darkest days are ahead of us, not behind us. And now is the time when things are shifting. We're going to have, there's going to be a new world order out there. Just clap for that, you stupid bastard. This will be the time because you really need uh, world order, financial world order. This alternative vision argues that ordinary men and women are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. That order and progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all-powerful sovereign. We are here to develop the great narrative, the story for the future, that in order to shape the future, you have first to imagine the future, you have to design the future. And Why is that not a requirement? All these mass murders, not, the, not this weekend, but have been because people have picked up kids and grabbed stuff off of counters, off of the, uh, anywhere. So the best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway, I, uh, um, anyway, to go after ISIS and prevent its re-emergence re re in, in both, anyway. Our kids are going to be, and our grandkids are going to be, anyway. By the way, the program is still there. Go to, anyway, 2, 10, 12, 15, Pope stepping on them. There's a, it's black, anyway.